In the vicinity of where the two men I have described were, there was a flash of light, or an, there was something which occurred which caught my eye in this immediate area on the embankment. And what this was, I could not state at that time, and at this time I could not uh, identify it, other than there was some unusual occurrence, a flash of light or smoke or, or something, uh, which uh, caused me to um, feel like something out of the ordinary had occurred there. In reading your testimony, Mr. Bowers, it uh, appears that just as you were about to make that statement, you were interrupted in the middle of the sentence by the commission counsel, who then went into another area. Uh, well, um, well, that's that's correct. I, I was there only to tell them what they asked, and uh, so that when they seemed to want to cut off the conversation, I felt like that was, uh, as far as I was concerned, that was the end of it. Mr. Bowers, how many shots did you hear? There were three shots, and these were spaced uh, with one shot, then a pause, and then two shots in very close order, such as perhaps uh, almost on top of each other, while there was some pause between the first and the second shots. Did you tell that to the Dallas police? Uh, yes, I, I told this to the police, and then uh, also told it to the uh, FBI, and also I had a discussion uh, two or three days later with them concerning this, and uh, they uh, made no comment, um, other than the fact that uh, when I stated I felt like the second and third shots could not have been fired from the same rifle, uh, they um, reminded me that I wasn't an expert, and I had to agree. Is this the exact spot you were standing on on November 22nd, Mr. Holland? That's correct. This is the exact spot that I was standing on November the 22nd, waiting for the parade. And where did you hear that third shot come from? Right over about 20 or 30 feet from the other end of that little picket fence. And where was the smoke that you saw? It drifted right out underneath those green trees, those two trees. From behind the fence? From behind the fence. It kind of hung there, just like a, for a few seconds, long enough that you could see that it was. And then what did you smoke? And then what did you do? Immediately after the president's car came underneath this overpass, a four of us broke a run around this fence to find out if we could see anybody leaving the air. Can we walk this way now? Do you want on the 22nd? We can walk that away right now. Fine. Right. We were trying to see what we could see, and this was the direction you walked on the 22nd. This was the direction. We made this right turn. This steam line, this pipe, and one man right behind me jumped, and another one jumped right on top of him. Fell on top of him? Fell on top of him. And were there more cars here on the 22nd than there are today? They were bumper to bumper. It's just a sea of cars. You couldn't hardly get through them. We were jumping over the bumpers, over the hood of the cars, to work our way to the spot that we saw the smoke and heard the shot. Then we came up to the wooden fence. Mr. Holland, did you remain behind here for a while when the police officers were searching the area? Approximately 15 minutes before I had to go back to my office. There was about 40 or 50 uh, people around here searching. And what did you find here? A lot of footprints behind this car, mud on the bumpers, 
And I looked around to see if I could find some empty shells or any evidence of a shot being fired and the bullet shell rejected from the gun. And this is where I saw the smoke from the third shot. Right drifting out around here? Just drifting out underneath these trees. And when that shot hit the president, as he passed by this lamppost, did you see the effect of the shot upon the president? Well, it knocked him over to his left, down in the car. Away from here? Away from here. About where was he in relation, where was the car, the presidential limousine, in relation to the lamppost? Uh, just a little to the left of that lamppost we're looking at. In effect, Mr. Holland, the Warren Commission published just a very small portion of your testimony and used your testimony as proof that no shots could have come from behind the fence. Did they accurately and fairly use your testimony? They are wrong because my testimony, and I made it very clear, that there was a fourth shot fired and one of those shots came from behind that picket fence. And there's no doubt in my mind I never will be, because I was on the spot. I saw the smoke, heard the report, and saw the smoke from behind that fence. And I don't see how that they could doubt there was a fourth shot fired. The vast majority of the witnesses who expressed an opinion as to the origin of the shots agreed with Mr. Holland that the shot did come from behind the fence. These witnesses, as this picture shows, were positioned throughout Dealey Plaza. The commission concluded that no credible evidence suggests that the shots were fired from any place other than the Texas School Book Depository building. Mr. Holland, you were on the overpass you were probably in the best position of any witness on November 22nd. In your view, did the Warren Commission present all of the facts regarding the assassination of President Kennedy? Well, let me say this. Uh, the Warren Commission, I think, had to report in their book what they wanted the world to believe when they read the Warren Commission. As you know, as well as I know, that uh, everybody in the world was reading this Warren Commission and it had to read like they wanted it to read. They had to prove that Oswald did it alone. In preparing its evidence, the commission suppressed one photograph, mutilated another, cropped a third, and made a mystery of a fourth. And I took the picture. It so happened my picture, I, when I took it, was at the same instant that the president was hit. And that does show in my picture. Did you realize what had happened when you heard no. the shot? No, I didn't. There was, oh, three or four real close together, and it was, uh, must have been the first one that, that uh, shot him, because that's when I, that was the time I took the picture, and during that time, after I took the picture, and the shots were still being fired, is I decided I'd better get on the ground. You did lie down? I did. We were, I was, oh, no more than 15 foot from the car, and in line of fire, evidently. Did Mrs. Kennedy scream on the first shot? Uh, I don't know about the first shot, but she did scream. She says, my God, he's been hit, or he's been shot. Now, the picture you took, I understand the FBI has it now. Uh, yes, that's right. The federal police did have it on November 22nd, but it was never published or referred to by the commission. The agent who took it from Mrs. Mormon described it. Quote, Mrs. Mormon had taken a picture of the lead motorcycle officer. 
In the background of this picture was a picture of the book depository building and the window where the gunman sat when doing the shooting. A picture of the window at the time of the shooting. Why wasn't it published? Wasn't it conclusive proof of Oswald's guilt or innocence? This is Commission Exhibit 5. It purportedly was found among Oswald's effects. It depicts General Walker's home in Dallas and was used by the Commission as proof that Oswald shot at General Walker. Marina Oswald was questioned about